what to look for in wine. In What to Look For in Wine, we spend 95% of the book showing you what to look for in wine. At the back of the book, we show you how to take notes. And we give you a tasting sheet and also a page that you can Xerox and copy off so that you can take your own notes. And if you're one of those super organized people, you can pick up our notes book at Amazon.com and it gives you a space to take notes on over 200 wines. Let me just quickly remind you, when following these exercises, try to be consistent by having a glass of wine handy each time you read through the material. When tasting, try to use the same basic shape of glass for both white and red wines. This puts all wines on the same level. Also, fill the glass to the same level each time. Many times I'll use a measuring cup. Taste all wines at room temperature, even the white ones. And be sure to hold the glass by the stem so not to smudge the bowl of the glass. Most of all, don't be in a hurry. Take your time and get comfortable with the idea that it takes years to really understand what wine is all about. This is a field where the more you know, the more you'll find out how much there is to know. But like a foreign language, the more you practice, the more proficient and confident you will become. So, what are we looking for? Do we really get all those smells that we say we do? What are we tasting? And then what are we going to do with it all once we have the information? We start by making sure we have a nice white background. If you don't have a tablecloth that you want to spill on, try using the back of the manual. It's great for seeing the color of wines. Here we're going to taste a wine and show you how to take notes. We're going to start with our appearance. We're going to start with the clarity and then under color, the depth and the different shades. Clarity. Simple looking at the wine and seeing if it's clear. It is. Clear. Is it bright? Yeah, I'd call that kind of bright. It's not hazy, it's not dull. So let's say clear and bright for our appearance. Color. Yeah. It's fairly light. Might even be very, very light. Here we have color, depth of color. Light, very light. So, clear, bright, very light. Shades. Hmm. Kind of a pale yellow, straw yellow. Now let's go with pale yellow. Let's go on to the nose. Under the nose we have the condition, the quality, the bouquet, and the aromas. We're going to take it, smell it. What's the condition? Is that clean, pleasant, or unpleasant? That's very clean. What's the quality like? Ah, kind of goes up to the bridge of the nose, right about here. Okay, we we'll call it. It's good quality. Bouquet. Hmm, interesting. I would say it's fairly developed. This particular wine here is very close to this here. Very young wine, not much showing except the fruit and the floral characteristics. On the graph, it's probably right about in this section here, maybe up to here. It might have, it might develop a little bit more as time goes on, but not much. Aromas. Get your nose in the glass. Draw in smoothly. If you breathe out before you bring the wine up to your nose, and then you breathe in slowly and steadily, you can kind of fill your lungs with air. That's, that's the way I like to 
smell my wines. And of course, swirling, all you're doing is you're coating the glass with the wine, and as it goes down the side of the glass, the alcohol releases the esters into the air, and this, this is what we're smelling, okay? Here's where it gets fun. Oh yeah. Leans towards fruits and floral. Very simple wine. As far as the aromas, leaning towards the fruits and the floral characteristics. Hmm. Come back to that in a bit. Let's go ahead and taste it. Under taste, we have the touch, sugar, acid, and tannin, the balance, the body, and the flavors. And this time, I'm going to use a spit cup. So, I'm going to put a little in our mouth. What is the touch? Well, it's certainly dry. There's no sugar in that wine whatsoever. The acid, we're going to give that an A plus because the acids are kind of high. Tannin, well, this is a white wine. Don't even need to really put it, but there is no tannin. So you can put that if you want. Okay, balance. Well, in the mouth, it was actually a little unbalanced. Unbalanced, and the reason why is because our acids are kind of high. So this is a very young wine. At a cooler temperature, this might be more enjoyable. Remember, we're drinking this at room temperature. Body. Let's try that again, and this time test for body. It's light. So, but very pleasant. Flavor. Flavors are good. And they kind of back up both the floral and the fruit characteristics. Now we could spend a lot of time and I can start picking out all kinds of different specific fruits and flowers, like honeysuckle and things like that. But I'll let you do that. Now the finish. And under finish, we have the condition and the length. Roll that around, let it warm up in your mouth, let it touch all parts of your mouth, and then either swallow it and spit it. What's the finish like? Mm. It's very pleasant. Still a little on the tart side, but just slightly. The length of the finish? Mm. About three or four seconds. So it's kind of medium. Gonna look at my tasting conditions. Good. This helps to remind you what the conditions were like. Was it smoky? Was it dark? Light? Good light. Bright background. Here's where I would normally put my different kinds of aromas that I get out of the wine. And I did say there was a touch of honeysuckle in there as far as the um, floral characteristics. Leans a little towards a touch of um, unripened pineapple. Not fully ripened pineapple, but unripened pineapple. So I put a U pineapple on there. Got just just a hint of green grass. In the mouth, these are all backed up. I get all of these when I'm tasting it in the mouth also. My final comments, this is a very 
pleasant, everyday drinking wine. Five, eighteen, fourteen. This happened to be a simple Pinot Grigio. I won't put the producer on there. And I believe it's about nine dollars a bottle. Okay. A lot of times I'll put my source where I, where I got the wine from also. That's up to you. You can go to as much depth as you want. This little box here, I usually leave that for scoring. Some people like to score their wines one to 10, one to five, one to 100. Some give them stars. You can make up your own, whatever you enjoy doing. I usually do not score a wine or give it stars unless it's something that I'm going to sell or and keep for a period of time because then I will keep meticulous notes on it. Everyday drinking wines, they're fun to practice with but and keep notes on for uh, prosperity's sake, but for the most part, it's just for fun. So that's what we encourage you to do. Just have fun.